So here we go with the yet another review of one of our Pro Feedback members tracks. This is a Mod Munir's track called, I think it was a uh, Fallback, yeah. And it's an orchestral trailer track, so he's definitely trying to get into that trailer world. And no better pro to help me review this track than Mike Gennato here who's joining me. And Mike has been uh, a very, very active and popular pro on our platform because Mike, like Trevor, has also been, not only been a composer and a, um, a producer himself, which he still does projects now, but he's actually turned himself into a library owner, a publisher as well. So he actually has had experience on both ends of the spectrum and not to mention that he's also done direct work for uh, companies like Netflix. So he's actually worked in various outlets and various sort of um, positions in the sync licensing business. So if you really want a 360 view on the industry, Mike is definitely the guy you want to get to know. And he's definitely the guy you want to submit your music to and potentially get some feedback. So let's go ahead and take a listen to a mods track here. And Mike will go ahead and start with our, um, our notes for it right afterwards. Here we go. Really cool track. Ahmad, I'm actually really glad that you submitted this track because you are a perfect example of a, of a sync license producer that has a lot going for you. Like this had a lot of great orchestration, great movements to it, great building. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here. Like you obviously just have a lot of natural talent. I think one thing that Mike and I are going to do in this video is basically just try to steer your talent in a licensable direction. That's about it. And that's pretty much all you need. Um, I actually find that a lot of our members are in your camp where uh, you, you, a lot of you guys have a lot of talent. You guys have a lot of great melodies. You have a, got a lot of great orchestration skills, but but it's just now a matter of how do I make all of these great ideas and this talent work for the sync licensing business. And I really can almost predict that's pretty much all Mike's going to tell you to do is to take your talent and push it this way. So really glad that you submitted this track, man. Well done. Uh, Mike, go ahead and give us uh, some maybe some positive things you liked about it uh, to start off with. Yeah, for sure. No, this is a great track. Um, this is really epic. has that energy. It has that build. It has really good builds. Um, the <clears throat> It's got the perfect blend of 
like sort of hybrid and electronic sounds mixed in with uh, orchestration. There's a little bit of like um, sort of that guitar, like at the end for drama. I personally thought that, you know, we could have had a little bit more of that sprinkled in throughout the track. But like, again, I think um, this is, you know, it sets up for a really sort of like epic and dramatic feel to, and it didn't deviate. So uh, from beginning to end, uh, you have like a really good idea and um, you just had to evolve and you had to build. And yeah, it is great. It was very clear um, as to what this track is and what it's doing and how it feels. Absolutely, man. And uh, what did you think in terms of the structure? Let's start with there, like where the track started, how it built, took some breaks, came back up. What did you think could be improved maybe with the structure? Yeah, so the structure is really good. Um, the thing about this, though, is that uh, trailer music is very specific because it has to um, achieve a very specific goal for like the trailer itself, not just the music in the trailer. So the music has to support that. Um, where I hear this track right now as it is, it's kind of sitting in between like a big epic score and also a trailer. So it's kind of like, you know, it's actually in a place where you could go both ways if you wanted to you know you can choose one which whichever way um however if you do want to go into the trailer uh direction for this i think that there are parts on here that are a little bit too long and then there's parts here that um you know can be shorter and then just get to uh quicker as well so let me if, if i break this down a little bit if we start from the beginning i think the beginning starts off a little bit too big um you know in the beginning of most trailer tracks you want it to be very simple you know, maybe just like a drone and one little hit, um, you know, just to like kind of set the mood and set the tone. Um, I think you have a little bit too much of your melody and harmonic structure right at the top. So I would save that to about like maybe 30, 45 seconds in technically being the start of your act two. Uh, so your intro, you want it to be really, really, really simple. Um, your current act two, the way that you have it building, um, let me see here if I can see it's probably I think from your like 20 seconds to like almost a minute long. Um, I think that's a little um, too long. Yeah, that that area. I think that's a little bit too long. Um, I think you can almost cut that in half because the next part that you have, the next two parts actually that you have are these really cool building parts. You have like this cool synth that comes in, which like pulses, and then you have this break and then you have this big like sort of brass like hit which also is another building part and what i like about this is that um you have like a break and edit point and you go into your pulsing like build section then you have another break and then another build section and i think that's something that like you know trailer editors nowadays um and trailers you know would like to see in different options of how to build um you know because they could split that up or they can keep them together the way that you have it and just have this massive build so um that's what i would say about your first two acts and i think that like you can set that up better if your beginning is really 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 small and simple um for your act three after i don't know i want to say like yeah around that area um I think that what ends up happening here is you have this nice build with the synth, you have this nice build with the brass, and then it just doesn't, it should hit right away. You know, it gets to that level at the very end, but it's, you know, I think at that point it should just hit right away. Big brass chords, um, you know, um, supporting the, the string melodies that you have. Um, you can still have the drums kind of sparse, but like still like really hitting hard. And then halfway through that, up the melody, up the, you know, maybe there's a counter melody in brass or something like that. Maybe there's a choir or maybe there's um, just, you know, just more drums, just more aggressive drums. And then your ending is is great. Um, where it gets to is the perfect, like, sort of um, height, you know, where it gets to. Um, the only thing is with trailers is right after that, like, maybe a bar or two after it decays, let it decay out and then put, like, one little small, tiny little hit, um, just like a ping, you know, like a note um on the root note which kind of ties it back to the intro just a tiny tiny bit um those are kind of tricks that like trailer editors used like to use for you know to hit like the end title screen and all that kind of stuff you know any end you know cards like with info and stuff like that for the studio but yeah i mean it's everything is there um you know i would just say like it's just a matter of rearranging just a tiny bit um cutting some things and getting to you know your large impact uh parts like faster cool yeah and i would definitely agree i think the one critique i would pick out is exactly what you said there's a little bit of fat in the beginning first two acts there's just a lot 
moving and it just feels a little repetitive it grows a little bit for sure you're adding new elements but i'm not really sure we need all of this i almost think that this track is probably 45 seconds too long probably maybe 30 seconds too long so i think either half of this section or even a big bigger chunk of the section could be cut out um, and you can treat this much more like just one big crescendo from the start of the track up to this large riser um, because you kind of have this nice rise and then it comes down and then it rises again. So you have a few different ways to kind of build up the track. And I didn't feel like the beginning needed as much of the tension and as long of the tension as we really had it there. So it's just a little bit unbalanced. And I agree with Mike the for sure on that last chorus, like you come in with these big drums, which is awesome, but the horns aren't there. There isn't this big like triumphant, bah, here's the third act, you know? So I would agree with him. You probably want to either make this part a lot more subdued and, and build it up up until a final act and maybe you want to extend this final act a little longer or just start those horns right here where this part comes in and then build up more towards the end so we don't obviously copy and paste the entire thing twice but yeah and i i would say um i don't know if i, I don't want to step on your toes mike but is there anything mixing and mastering wise maybe you want to touch on or um the mix sounds really good um i think that like there so this could also be a little bit personal taste um, as well. I personally like um, thicker drums, you know, and I think this is a, um, you know, this is really isn't anyone's fault, I think, except for like some of the sample libraries. Cause so um, a lot of those hybrid hits that are used tend to, um, the hits tend to be heavy on the high end, um, just out of the box. So I would just watch for that. And um, either it's by layering like a thicker drum underneath that to make them really pop or, uh, you know, cause sometimes whenever those sounds get layered into the mix, all you hear is the top. And then it just sounds kind of like a dirty crash rather than like a massive hit. Um, but yeah, as far as frequency range and balance and everything like that, I think everything works really well. I did hear certain instances, especially like in the final hit, you have this like really big subby, like, um, like sub boomy hit, which adds a lot of impact on that one. I think that you can probably, um, sprinkle that in other places, uh, along the track, maybe even especially more in the uh, third act because that give it like you know sort of the, that final hit that you have just had a lot of impact you know and if you have that all throughout like as accents throughout your third act that'll make that third act sound a lot bigger too absolutely yeah and only one note that i can add is the track was just a little on the quiet side i just noticed from previous tracks that i've reviewed here um that i had to turn up my speaker a little bit more for this one ahmed so you can definitely get a little more aggressive on your uh, mastering volume uh limiting volume however it is you're doing that but um because like again like all of your instruments are amazing the orchestration is there but this is kind of just, I think, how it works a lot of times to take licensing. You can have an amazing track and everything's just beautifully licensable. And it's just a, a, a tad, a, especially in the trailer world, especially in the trailer world, yeah. it's just a tad quieter than the next track. And the next track is just as great, but it's just at a max volume. Your track will just not feel as big, as, as epic, as impactful, even though we're literally just talking about turning a knob that's about as far as we're going with this so that's what i don't want to see a lot of producers getting in the habit of and the reason why i, I always bring that note up is because that was the biggest issue i had in my early career is my tracks were about probably 6 db quieter than pretty much the average track in the catalogs that i work with and that's because i just didn't know what i was doing mixing or mastering uh, or at least the best that i could do was to produce a kind of a quieter mix and i know for a fact that because i would listen to them back to back i listened to my track and listen to another track and it's like mine just didn't sound as present it just didn't sound like it was as much in the room as the neck track i think i liked you know i liked what i was producing and composing i liked my riffs and all my ideas but just the execution of not having that volume presence there it really i think negatively impacted my placements early early on in my career so i always try to harp on that to don't do all this work and at the very end submit something that's just you know 60 be quieter than the next guy's track so yeah. just make sure that you are always using a reference track going to some libraries and a b comparing your mix to the ones that are already out there being released that are top notch and make sure that your tracks really are matching them um volume wise to the best of your ability so that's awesome mike uh do you have any last minute thoughts um uh, for this composer before we wrap this one up yeah, for sure. So um, just to um, add on to what you said about um, mastering side and, and loudness, especially with trailer music, trailer music is, is you know, mastered at very, very high levels. It's almost like EDM, you know, um, just how high it goes. And it's, it's interesting because you would think that it's orchestral, you know, it should sound open um, and it should sound like sort of 
there's like a purity involved, but like, it's, it's funny, the, the mixing and the mastering techniques in uh, trailer music is much more akin to like EDM than it is actually to um, orchestral or score music. Um, they are able to um, get that open sound as well. So a little bit of that is a trick with um, how you handle, per um, I'm sorry, compression and stuff like that during your mix down and also uh, using stuff like soft clippers and stuff like that on certain instruments. Um, so it is a trick between, you know, that, that play between um, mixing and mastering to get to get the level up to that high, but like, yeah, definitely listen to a lot of trailer music. Um, see how, you know, you'll get the sense of, as to how, how much it smacks really. And, um, and that's just kind of what you're up against, unfortunately. Um, but like, once you hit that though, it'll, this will sound really massive. So. Totally. Yeah. So you definitely have all the elements there. I mean, so definitely keep with it, keep going with it, trim the fat a little bit, crank up your volume and you're definitely on a really, really highly <laughs> licensable yeah. path here with this music. So well done, man. So I hope you guys enjoyed this feedback. Hope you guys learned something, maybe take something that you can apply into your music. That would obviously be the best possible scenario for these videos. Um, but if you want feedback like this on your particular tracks, uh, you do need to join us in pro feedback. It is the only way that Mike and myself can listen to your music and can give you guys reviews just like this. Um, every single month you can get a review from Mike or from any one of our pros. You get to decide that from month to month. And every month I do a monthly live review with all the members. So if anybody wants to show up and submit a track for me to review uh, your track live, you can absolutely do that as well. And on top of that, we do these bonus reviews where I release them to YouTube. So there are basically three different ways every month for you to potentially get a review. And right now we still have a very uh, a massive discounted rate on the monthly plan for pro feedback. Um, but that will not be around forever because I will definitely be raising the prices once our membership levels get to the point where we need to kind of slow down how many people are joining the platform. But you do have an opportunity right now to join at a pretty great discounted rate. So I highly encourage you to check it out at least. The link is in the description box below. Uh, you can cancel anytime and there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So we stand by what we do here so much that we are willing to give you a 30 day money back guarantee. So you can literally join the platform, submit a track for our review. If it's not the best thing you've ever gotten, in your uh, sync career, just email me. Let me know it's not for you. No problem. We cancel you and refund you because I don't want you to be on our platform. I don't want your business if it's not actually doing something positive for you. So we want to make sure that the time that we put into this, the time that Mike shows up and does this stuff is actually going to be useful for you. And then you're going to take those notes and that feedback like Ahmed hopefully right now is going to and make a much more high quality product for your libraries. And that's really what this is about. If you don't have professional ears on your music, you could be doing like what I was doing in the beginning of my career, which is just stabbing in the dark for years and years and years, and also being in denial about what I really needed to work on and what I really needed to improve. And I, you know, this is the service that I definitely would have signed up for if I had just started in sync licensing, because to get professional ears to hear my music, to let me know if I'm on the right track or not. It's like you, I mean, try to find a sync producer that's got the time to give you that kind of feedback. It's very difficult. Everybody's busy, very, very busy, but this is a very affordable way for you to get that kind of feedback on a monthly basis. So you can do a check-in and see, are you going in the right direction or do you need to course correct on some of your producing, mixing, or mastering skills? So very powerful stuff. I encourage you guys to check it out. So thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate your time today, buddy. Yep, thank you.